This is a quick demonstration of the ESX 3.5 multipathing behavior. First, let's take a look at the fixed path policy. So here we've got a host. Uh, this is actually connected to a Clarion, and we forced it uh, to use the fixed policy. And if you take a look at it uh, via the CLI, you can see that there's uh, four paths to uh, these LUNs, and uh, we've got various ones that are on and active and preferred. So what we've done is in the classic ESX 3.5 thing, we've distributed the workload through static load balancing by setting active paths and preferred paths. If you take a look at it in the GUI, you can see that reflected here. So for example, this first um, LUN is on the first path, um, with that being the active and the preferred path, and so on for the second one, and for the third one, and for the fourth one. Now this behavior has changed a lot in vSphere, so it can be done uh, very um, automatically. Um, and we'll talk more about that later. But for now, let's reboot this host. The thing that we're trying to determine is, is the setting that we configure for the multipathing policy, in other words, which path is active and uh, which is the preferred path, does it, uh, uh, is it persistent across a reboot? So just uh, fast forwarding here a little bit, you can see that uh, the host is booted up. If we try and log into it, the uh, obviously the uh, um, management agents have not started yet. So let's just give it a few more seconds and then try again. Notice in the background that the LUNs are distributed evenly between storage processor A and B. We're going to come back to that also in a little bit later. So if you take a look at that host and we go and we take a look at the configuration, again, what we're trying to see is, did the settings survive the ESX host reboot? And if we take a look at the uh, first LUN, it's still on the first path, and you can see that it's that's the preferred path. And on the second path, you can see it did it. Now let's switch everything over to the most recently used path policy, which is the default for any uh, what VMware calls an active passive array, which includes a Clarion. Uh, again, that doesn't actually mean that it's active passive. It just means that a LUN is owned by one storage processor at a time. Um, so if we take a look here in the GUI, we can see that there's an active path selection, but there's no preferred path setting. So if we take a look, we've uh, carefully load balanced here across multiple uh, different interfaces using the static load balancing mechanism. Uh, in ESX 3.5. To call it load balancing is a little bit of a stretch. Um, what we're really saying is just manually distributing the workload. There's no load balancing per se. So, if we now go and we take a look and um, uh, take a look at it in the CLI, again you can see that there's a standby and active paths. Uh, even though it says preferred, the preferred setting actually doesn't hold. So let's reboot that host once more. And again, here you can see the host is rebooted. Um, again, time for fast forwarding a little bit. And again, the question here is now with the MRU policy, is the path setting persistent? So if we log in and we take a look, you'll notice an interesting thing has happened. First of all, notice in the background, all of the LUNs are now on storage processor A. So they've all been trespassed to the uh, first storage processor. If we go and we take a look in the GUI, let's see what's happened on the path management. If we go and we take a look at those individual uh, paths, let's do a rescan. Okay, great. Let's go and take a look at that first LUN. And uh, no surprise here, it's going to be on the first path, which is fine. That's what it was on originally. But let's take a look at the second one. And you'll notice that it's also on the act on the first path. What happens is that after an ESX host reboot, if set in the GUI, it's not persistent. And it also causes all of the LUNs to be trespassed from one storage processor to another. Now this isn't just a Clarion behavior, this is a behavior that's triggered by the most recently used path policy 
uh, on any array that uses the MRU policy, shifting um, all of the load down, in essence, down to one port. There's a script that I'm executing here. It's available on virtualgeek.typepad.com, um, which basically will trespass the LUNs to their default owners. So if you take a look in the background, what you'll see is that they're starting to rebalance across storage processors. Notice that there's some solid state drives in that configuration, just as a neat little thing to point out. Um, the other thing that the script does is it uh, redistributes the uh, active paths through the various paths that are available uh, to the ESX host. So one other thing that I wanted to point out is that in ESX 3.5, there's a workaround whereby specifying the path via the ESX CFG dash empath command, not by using the VMHBA name, but using something called the VML, which you can find instructions again on there on the blog. Um, you can actually make it persistent so that it'll survive uh, host reboots, which means that you still use the script, but only to trespass the lines back to their default owners. Uh, the path selection will, will stay the same. And if we go and we take a look now, you'll notice that the active path distribution has been uh, redistributed. So this is important behavior to understand. This is native uh, ESX behavior. Again, we've used a Clarion in the example here to highlight that the MRU path settings for active path are not persistent across an ESX host reboot. But this applies to any array that uses the MRU policy. Um, it's also important to highlight that um, this behavior changes fairly significantly in the vSphere release, uh, where there are significant changes to multipathing. But I think it's important for anyone who's running uh, a VMware infrastructure 3.5 environment or earlier to understand this uh, multipathing behavior. Thanks very much, and have a great day.